Hello, one of my weaknesses is Delftware. I've got into it relatively late in my own teaching career. I think most people come to it rather late in their career. It's more of a mature taste, perhaps. What appeals to me enormously about it is the free-flowing, light and easy way that the things are decorated. The slightly often folksy and whimsical form of the decoration and the fact that the stuff has actually managed to survive. Uh, the sort of Delta that we deal in is typically 18th and early 19th century stuff. Uh, it was born out of a much, much earlier tradition of, of the glazing, um, which goes back, in fact, I think, to sort of Persia in the 9th or 10th century, but typically uh, found a European home in Italy in the sort of 14th, 15th centuries, and hence majority was produced. There's nothing really then was produced of any consequence until the 18th century. Uh, it's known as Delftware, principally because uh, a large proportion of it was made in the Netherlands around the town of Delft, which was prolific, but it was made in England and uh, all over Flanders. Um, it typically comes in blue and white colours because blue allows a very high firing temperature without a diminution of colour. But there are plenty of polychrome and uh, many coloured items around. But uh, notwithstanding that, probably the most popular uh, and normal colour is blue and white. Uh, you also get polychrome, and you also get a particular favourite of mine, which is manganese. That's the sort of purple colour. The decoration tended to be with Delftware, uh, initially of a Chinese or mock Chinese. Uh, style and form, but there are often English, patently English designs, and some of the, the designs are rather whimsical and odd. Now, here I've got a uh, jar, it's an absolutely typical, in, um, wrong, sorry, dealt copy of a Chinese vase, this broad load decoration, these reserves with Chinese flowers in them, uh, and these lotus type panels as well and the decoration is very much of a Chinese idiom. If you go a little bit further on in the extreme you get a plate such as this which is absolutely finely decorated um, and done in quite a sophisticated way very much copying Chinese porcelain. You do get some very whimsical and odd things though forms of decoration. Here, I've got, this is part of a much longer set of plates. And when you look at it, it's a marvellous sort of contradiction. This is the Orient meets Europe. And here, we've got a, a gentleman in a frock coat and breeches and a tricorn hat. And he's picking cherries as he wanders through a garden. But whilst he's patently European, the garden, and indeed the decoration to the rim, is, is completely Chinese. The person who decorated these, a, a painter and decorator in Holland probably, maybe in Flanders in, in, in probably 1770, 1780, sort of had an idea for the decoration and just went at it, incorporating various different styles and motifs. And I think that sort of thing is very charming and absolutely typical of what appeals to me about Delftware. It's a spontaneity and a happy sort of form of decoration and really ignoring many of the rules that my more formal porcelain and pottery would keep to. Jars were made in large numbers. Plates were made in very large numbers. There are more sophisticated things as well that were made, such as uh, typically tulip stands, um, flower bricks, that sort of thing. Um, 
regardless, I think they're delightful things. And rather curiously, with Delftware, because of the very nature, the brittle nature of the glaze, it's slightly like, you know, opaque glaze, which allowed decoration, uh, and the fact that it was always glazed onto a very coarse ground, you inevitably get what's called frittery, which is this damage around the side, which is essentially the ground slightly breaking and also the glaze um, cracking because the glaze is extremely brittle. Rather perversely, if this was a piece of porcelain, it would dramatically detract from its price because it's bricked and damaged. With Delftware, it's exactly what one wants to find. It's bizarre but true. I hope you look at Delftware in perhaps when you see it around, there's some very good collections around. At the Ashmolean in Oxford there's a wonderful collection of tin days Delftware. There's a good collection uh, in the V&A as well. Probably a very good place to start would be the Ashmolean. It's a very broad and well-structured uh, collection which isn't too overpowering. The rest of the museum is very good as well. So. Uh, if you have time, go and look at it. Uh, we keep putting stuff onto the website, Delftware, my, my general quest to build up more and more and more of it. Uh, there's plenty on there. We've got a number of pairs of Delft vases, which I think are very nice at present. Uh, there's some quite nice sets of manganese plates on there, and there's some polychrome plates as well. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, catch my next one. Bye.